Hi, thank you everybody for joining this presentation on our Secure Risk Live. Um, this is a shared presentation by Joe Shi and myself. Uh, Joe is located in Shanghai, where he manages uh, our Risk 5 and security teams. My name is Fran Sistemans and I'm located in Santa Clara and responsible for NVIDIA's multimedia hardware. Let me start with a little bit of history. Uh, before RISC V, we had a proprietary processor called Falcon. And Falcon has been uh, tremendously successful, uh, has shipped all for over 10 years and literally billions of copies. And about five years ago, though, we realized that we either had to give it a major overhaul or we had to look elsewhere. And in the end, we decided that RISC V was the best way forward for us. And uh, we're currently on our second generation of RISC V processors. And this generation, in particular, added security, a function that was before also connected to the Falcon. So, where does NVIDIA use embedded processors? Uh, almost everywhere, really. We have over 20 different applications, ranging from power management, security, and control of multimedia engines and our graphics processors. A uh, number of applications that require security is constantly growing and at the same time the variety of attacks that we need to defend against is growing as well. Um, this slide shows objectives uh, that our security architecture tries to achieve. So initially when we introduced our first security hardware about 15 years ago, the main goal was to prevent piracy of premium movies. Uh, since then, we've uh, had many more reasons uh, for security hardware. Uh, privacy of user data has been a big subject. Uh, anything from financial information, personal photos, uh, location tracking, etc. And recently, with more corporate data and compute moving to the cloud, uh, the confidentiality of data stored in shared servers has become a big issue as well. Um, besides illegal access of data, um, individual users and corporations have become more and more dependent on computer systems. And uh, attackers have uh, targeted the availability of those systems, for example, by hijacking the user data like ransomware or by flooding the compute resources to create a denial of service. Um, Finally, we've also come to rely on the integrity of the data for critical tasks. Uh, one example is a self-driving car where there's worries that an attacker may mess with the sensor data, uh, which would obviously uh, be very dangerous. It could create uh, uh, accidents if the car computer cannot uh, detect certain hazards. So in short, uh, security is critical to many applications that NVIDIA is addressing. And I think that the same is true for many other companies as well. Um, here are some of the challenges that we faced while creating uh, this latest uh, security architecture. Um, first, we need isolation between multiple processes running on the same hardware. Uh, one reason is multi-occupancy, uh, but this is also important to avoid that a breach of one piece of uh, firmware leads to the total system being uh, corrupted. Um, next, we need to deal with a variety of attacks. Uh, some recent ones are highlighted here. Um, there are software-based attacks that try to change the control flow by corrupting, for example, the stack and memory. Um, and a similar attacks, similar effect may also uh, be achieved by uh, glitch attacks uh, that, for example, um, mess with the memory of the clocks. In both cases, the attacker tries to execute unauthorized pieces of code, uh, possibly at a very high privilege level. Um, 
Then there's other attacks that merely try to infer information from so-called side channels, uh, for example, by uh, power of timing measurements. And unlikely though that may seem, it has been demonstrated that hackers can extract valuable keys from such measurements. And the widely publicized spectrum meltdown attacks are in this category. And the final challenge for security is verification. Uh, for security, we need to prove that only those operations that are explicitly allowed to happen, and the space of behaviors that are not supposed to happen is typically very large and defined only implicitly by negation. So let's dive into the implementation of our secure subsystem. Uh, at the core is uh, the NV Risk Five with several uh, security extensions that Joe will talk about later. But uh, in the complete subsystem, there's, there's other units as well. Uh, first, we have accelerators for cryptographic uh, functions, um, specifically hash functions like SHA, symmetric crypto functions like AES, and asymmetric uh, crypto standards like RSA and elliptic uh, curve cryptography. Random numbers are very important in security, so we've also added a true random, random number generator. And finally, uh, we have uh, used storage for keys as well as internal scratch pet memories for intermediate results uh, so that those, those intermediate results can remain inside a secure subsystem. With that, I'm going to hand off to Joe, who will dive into the details of our secure NVRISC 5. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe. I'm from uh, Multimedia Department, NVIDIA. I'm leading NVRISC 5 and Peregrine Hardware Development. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to briefly talk about the security architecture of NVRISC 5 and the major architecture enhancements that we are doing um, to um, meet the security requirements um, in several areas, such as memory security, fault injection, and um, verification. So first of all, um, this diagram shows the uh, overview of the security architecture of NV Risk v um, Basically, the hardware is built upon a Risk v privilege spec um, it has three modes, machine mode, supervisor mode, and user mode, with the uh, MPU, which is NVIDIA proprietary address translation scheme, and in supervisor mode, and the PMP in machine mode to provide memory isolation. Our software stack is built upon hard on top of hardware to support multiple security partitions, which is the mo uh, which we think is the greatest uh, um, architecture advantage that RISC-V security um, architecture can provide. In this diagram, you can you can see three partitions running on top of the separation kernel, which is the machine mode firmware. But actually, our software can support uh, more partitions than three. Next, I'm going to talk about briefly talk about the secure boot. Um, basically, uh, the unique piece uh, for NVIDIA Risk Five here is the manifest and hardware policy. Basically, how the policy defines what you can do and what you cannot do, and also the um, debug capabilities uh, for the firmware. So the manifest defines the policies, and the boot room will authenticate and decrypt first mutable code and manifest. And then boot room will set up initial policy in the hardware access control registers and lock them up. Um, after that, a boot room will just jump to the separation kernel running in machine mode. And then separation kernel will authenticate and set up policy for each partition. By having hardware enforced um, policy during secure boot, um, we can limit the uh, privilege that the uh, um, a machine mode separation kernel can have in the SOC, such that even the um, machine mode um, separation kernel is compromised, it does not really mean that the whole SOC is compromised. Um, we are also enhancing PMP um, to meet the security requirements. First of all, we extend the 16 entries to 32 entries in order to better support multiple partitions. Um, secondly, today 
PM, in today's PMP um, spec, um, machine mode can assess um, user mode and supervisor mode's memory and execute from user mode and supervisor mode's memory, which is an obvious attack vector for privilege escalation attack. We have a proposal to uh, fix this um, security um, um, vulnerability um, um, to basically prevent machine mode to assess supervisor mode and user mode's data and execute from supervisor mode and machine mode's memory. And we also introduced a unit called IOPMP to provide uh, physical memory protection to all the other memory masters in the Peregrine subsystem because there are not there's not only CPU but also DMA engine and AES engine and SHA engine. Those engines need to be need to assess memory. The IOPMP provides the physical isolation um, required to isolate physical memory to uh, among those um, uh, devices. Otherwise, we'll be relying on machine mode to, um, to, con to, to control those devices, which, which makes TCP size too big. Um, on the runtime software, we are introducing a feature called TBI and pointer masking, which basically the idea is to utilize the non uh, unused top bits in the 64-bit ad address to basically to allow software to utilize those unused bits for um, memory tagging. Um, the proposal is actually being actively discussed in um, TE group and J extension task group. Um, but we are going to do that in MV Risk 5. Next, I'm going to talk about the dual call lock step of, of MV Risk 5. This is basically to a countermeasure of um, fault injection attack. Um, apart from all the other system level countermeasures. Um, first of all, the MV Risk 5 is a, a true cycle delay dual call lock step. Um, secondly, we not only compare the interfaces um, of the call, we also very actively select the critical signals inside the call. For example, PC value, ROB, and also debug signals and critical CSRs, and compare them between the main core and shadow core, uh, that provides a, provides a more fine-grained um, countermeasures to, to fault injections. And the core will hold itself on dual call lock step error. Um, we also introduce a hot instruction to basically stop the core infinitively until the next reset to avoid um, soft software to use infinitive loop to, um, to, to stop, to hang the core. Because if we use the uh, infinity loop, it's, it's, it's an obvious fault injection target. Um, verification is very important to um, security processor. On, on both software side and hardware side, we are very actively um, using formal tools. On the software side, we are partnering with, the, with Ada Core and use Ada Spark in the most critical piece of uh, firmware such as Broom and separation kernel. The main advantage of Ada Spark is that it, it, the code can be proven to be without any runtime error and also can be set statically proven against contracts, which is a, a great advantage comparing to um, languages like C and C++. Um, secondly, we, we use um, Cadence and Synopsis formal tools to, verif to formally prove the properties in RISC-V core, such as um, this slide shows three examples, such as um, machine execution and interrupts must start from machine mode vector, and SMO which should never jump and step directly into machine mode. And also we use formal tools to formally prove uh, units such as PMP rules and also IOPMP rules. Okay, that's all um, the features uh, um, uh, we are doing for MB Risk Five. With that, I will switch uh, back to France. Thank you, Joe. Um, let me quickly summarize. Uh, 
So we found that uh, the, the privileged bag of risk five was a very good starting point for our secure processor, and it had uh, almost all the features that we needed. Where we where we felt that there was some uh, some gap, or uh, there could be some clarifications or additions to the spec, we proposed these as uh, risk five specifications and those are currently being ratified and besides that of course there's a lot of work that you need to do on the micro architecture for example um, side channel attacks is something that you could only address with micro architecture it's not an architectural feature but uh, the key point is that uh, risk 5 as it is today the risk 5 isa as it is today uh, offers all the handles that you need to create a secure processor. I think that's very good news. And um, thank you. And uh, goodbye. <laughs>